what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel so as you can see we've got the red gto behind me today we're going to start getting the engine and transmission ready to come out of this thing we've got a lot of other parts to pull off it so let's get right into it So one of the first things that we wanted to do was we wanted to get the front bumper off the red car as well as the little air dam that goes underneath it there. And when we went to do that, we noticed something a little fishy. We've, I've had this car for probably five, six years now, and I've never really had to take the front bumper off this car. So being the first time we took the front bumper off, we've definitely noticed that it's been tapped here pretty good. So. I do want to get this out of the way when we start pulling everything else out to start getting at the headers and get those off and then the coils, I'm going to pull the intake, I'm going to get this hood out of here and start getting this engine ready to come out. But before I go and unbolt this support, I'm thinking that we might go ahead and give it a try to pull this back out a little bit so that once we take it off, we'll be able to get it lined back up eventually and put it back on if we want to. I don't want to pull it off now and then have it kind of like hold that shape and it'd just be miserable to try to line the bolt holes up again. So let's go ahead and get this thing fired up. We already got the exhaust off it, so you guys will get to hear that open header, it's pretty cool. But we'll get this thing fired up, we'll get it turned around and we're gonna start trying to figure out how we wanna pull this uh, bumper support back out. So let's get after it. Is it even bent in there, or is it just a face that's bent? No, it's bent a little bit, just so I'm happy. Close. Damn, dude. 
we got it a lot closer than it was face the face of it here you can see is still boat or bubbled pretty good but as long as the back here is a lot straighter we should be able to get it off and then bolt it back up later if we want to so let's get this thing backed in over there and start taking stuff off it well guys if you couldn't tell i'm really trying to get this thing done it's getting to be springtime and i want to get this thing back on the road it's actually raining out here right now and i got the yellow car in the garage so can't really get this one in there but you can see i got the uh, catch can is actually out of the way now as well as a bunch of other little things and i'm starting to try to get the master cylinder for the clutch and the brake master cylinder as well as the brake booster out of here because we need all of that stuff for the other car so i went ahead got all that stuff unplugged i broke these uh, brake lines free got the bracketry all free here and then as well as on the inside i'll show you guys where i'm at you can see the clutch master is on the left there and then the brake is on the right and you can see i've got well you might not be able to see it but i've got three out of the four nuts off of that and i'm leaving the last one on just to hold it in place while i finish taking all the lines and stuff off but i'm just trying to plug away out here tonight while i got a little bit of time get what i can done and then jump back on it hopefully tomorrow it's supposed to be really nice out but just wanted to show you guys where i'm at and i will keep updating you guys along the way and hopefully get this thing pulled out all right so i got the brake master cylinder out and the brake booster out and i think i'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here for tonight guys we did get a few things out of there i got the whole catch can system out of the way as well as that brake booster which i'm going to show you guys real quick so I took it out all as one unit. I'm sure you could separate it and take the booster by itself and the master by itself, but I figured just take the whole thing and then I can put it in as one unit. The biggest pain in the butt was getting it by the wiring harnesses that are right there, but it wasn't too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there, guys, and we will get back at it in the morning and that's what you guys will see next. All right, guys, well, it's a beautiful day out here today. And we are working on the GTO again. Last night, as you guys seen, I ended up calling it quits after I got the uh, brake master cylinder out. I also went ahead and got the clutch master cylinder out. And now we've got this thing up on stands. And we are going to start pulling all the ignition stuff off. I'm going to get all the uh, plug wires and the coils and the brackets all out of the way. And then I'm going to start taking these headers out. Not exactly sure what I want to do with the headers yet. If I want to clean them up and either have them coated or painted and put them back on. Or if I think I'm going to just end up getting a new set. Not really sure what I want to go with. So I might end up sticking with these. But some of you new guys might be wondering, some of the new subscribers to the channel, why exactly we're doing this. So we went ahead and we picked up the yellow GTO probably about a month ago now. Maybe a little over a month ago. And this car had no engine, no transmission. All the suspension and everything was stock, so we switched all of our suspension out of the red car here, which included the uh, Viking double adjustable rear shocks, Petter's drag springs, front and rear, Petter 9010 front drag struts, um, all new brakes, drilled and slotted rotors, carbon ceramic pads, all that good stuff. Um, we went through and did every single bushing on this car with Poly from uh, Super Pro, and the car only has 40,000 original miles on it. The body is absolutely immaculate. The paint is super clean. Whereas the red GTO I've had for hmm, five, six years now. And the body's just not the greatest. It's got big scratches, dings, dents all over it. And it's got 140,000 miles on it. So to me, for what I paid for that yellow car, it made perfect sense for me to pull everything that we have on this car, put it on that car, and then get rid of the red one as a roller or save it for parts if I need parts. But the yellow one's just going to make an all-around cleaner, perfect car. And as some of you guys might know, it goes perfectly with my 1300 horsepower Hellcat. So both being yellow was a huge selling point for me. Yes, I could have definitely just wrapped the red one here, but with the body and the shape that it's in, to wrap it i would have had to fix a bunch of stuff and honestly this car has just been through a lot i mean even before i bought it all the wiring is a complete and total mess as you guys seen when we took the front bumper cover off this was all caved in 
Um, similar issues in the rear that I've noticed before is the, uh, it's definitely been hit in the rear too. So we figured we would just completely start over, start from scratch, nice new clean canvas and just make it our own. So we haven't exactly decided what we want to do for boost yet. I think we're going to go with an LSA because this car, as you can see, we have the headers. We've got the 823, basically LS3 heads, um, LS3 intake manifold, Holly fuel rails. We're building a fuel system for this thing. And the cam that's in it is a BTR stage three PDS cam, uh, which is a blower cam basically. So I'm thinking I might still stick with my original plan of going LSA, but I'm open to other options. Haven't exactly decided yet, but let's go ahead and start ripping these headers off and get all these coils out of our way. And I'll get back with you guys. All right guys, so we got the coils and the brackets all out of the way along with the wires. And now we are going to start taking the headers off. We're also gonna have to get in here, not sure if you guys can see that, but we're gonna have to get in there and get that bolt out of the steering shaft and get that disconnected. Otherwise these headers won't come out. So we're gonna go ahead and start on that. All right guys, so we got this header out. This one wasn't too bad. Guy that did brake lines <clears throat> for me a while back did a pretty horrendous job as you guys can see. But other than that, it came right out. They're looking pretty bad. I'm not sure if I wanna paint them or if I'm gonna end up going with a new set or coat them or whatnot. But now we're on this side and we just got the steering shaft off. That's one of the biggest pains in the butt of the whole ordeal. But now we're gonna go ahead and loosen these ones up and see if we can't get this one to slide out similar. All right guys, so as you can see, we did get both headers out. This side over here was an absolute bear. We ended up jacking up the engine a little bit and dropping the steering rack. We were just wedged all kinds of ways. But that could just be because of the headers I have. So this side came out extremely easy as you guys saw. Now, We've got the radiator petcock open and we're just gonna drain the coolant. And as you can see, we got the truck running. We're gonna go grab a coffee while this thing drains and then we'll come back and get back at it.
Right now we're working on getting all the AC lines off and out of the way. Got the radiator out. Got a few more radiator hoses to pull. Here, I'll just show you guys. Got the radiator and everything out. Condenser. Everything's opening up pretty good. We're trying to debate on if we're going to take this AC pump and the alternator off when we go to pull this engine out. We're not sure if we're going to have to yet. But right now we're working on getting all these final lines off, get the AC lines off, because we need to steal all those lines for the other car because he stripped that thing down pretty bare. But once we get all those lines off, we're pretty much down to pulling the intake manifold. Uh, I'm going to use my vacuum pump to get the fluid out of the power steering so we can get that out of there. And then just a bunch of plugs and stuff, and we'll be getting pretty close to pulling this thing out. All right guys, so we're still moving along here. We're making pretty good progress. We got a bunch of the AC lines out of the way. Got all those hoses that I was telling you about off. But like I said, the other car needs all this stuff. He stripped everything. So now we're gonna follow our AC line back and pull it off from the firewall there. And then it routes up and around so, so we can get this little guy out. And then I'm gonna follow these hoses back to what I'm guessing they probably go, yeah, they go to the heater core so we can pull those off. And then we can start getting to unplugging stuff. Right, guys so as you can see we got the yellow gto outside so we could get it out of our way we got the engine hoist out and we are getting real close to pulling this guy out here i'm gonna get under it and pull the drive shaft the rest of the way out and then other than that we've just got to loosen the transmission mounts we already got the engine mounts broken free and just about everything else out of our way i also went ahead and took the hearst shifter out of here so that's out of our way. Like I said, we're getting pretty close to getting this thing out, hopefully. I did go ahead and pick up a plug for the tail shaft of the transmission to try to help us from leaking any fluid. I think I picked this one up on Summit's website. Seemed like it'd be kind of handy to have, especially because we're trying to pull this thing out with the engine and the transmission all one unit. So we're gonna have to come way up in the front and try to slide this thing out. Not sure if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. Also picked up this nice engine plate from uh, Motion Raceworks. Seems like a nice piece. Go ahead and give that a try today too. But I'm gonna get underneath it, get the drive shaft out, and see if we can't get this thing pulled. All right guys, so we got the motor plate on there. Super nice fitment, thanks to Motion Raceworks. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put a jack under the transmission for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the transmission mounts. Um, I already broke them loose, but I'm gonna go ahead and take them out, leave a jack under there just for now until we know how this thing's gonna settle on the engine hoist. And then hopefully we're going to be able to tilt the back of this thing down enough where we're going to be able to come basically right out up and over this with the transmission and everything right on it. I might end up taking the transmission off the engine 
out here anyways to put it on a stand because I'm gonna do the uh, trunnion kit, an oil pump, and maybe a couple other things while we have it apart. But let's go ahead and get this thing out. All right guys, so as you can see, we got the engine pulled out finally. We've been plugging right along on the other car. This one's pretty well stripped down now. I got the uh, master for the clutch and the brake out, as I think I showed you guys in the beginning of that video. But we've been plugging away on the yellow car quite a bit here the last couple days. Just doing the little tedious stuff. We, uh, I decided to put the ABS delete block up here and I made a little bracket and we mounted the uh, line lock right next to it. I was going to put this down like under the car to try to hide some of the like rat nest of wiring or of uh, brake lines and stuff. But the reason I decided not to do that and the reason we decided to put it up here was for a couple reasons. Reason one being that I ordered all these lines in stainless steel from SS Tube, which I will link them in the description below. Um, great lines, they fit perfectly for a stock application. We did have to bend them a little bit to try to make them work with what we were doing, but they did work out good, so I didn't wanna go cutting and uh, flaring all of them again to just to relocate that ABS block. Plus, that's something that we could always do a little bit later on once the car is together and running and like on the road, you know, that stuff that we can touch up and change around later. Um, another big thing that we got done was we got the uh, booster and the master cylinder for the clutch and the brake in. We did have to swap the pedals over. Um, the other car didn't have a clutch, or this car didn't have a clutch pedal in it because the previous owner was gonna switch over to automatic. So I had to go ahead and get a clutch pedal in this thing, which was kind of a pain in the butt to get the uh, clip on. And then while we were in there, I also did a bunch of other stuff. We got all the wiring ran for our gauges and I made, I had to make a couple little custom brackets to fit our gauges into this pod, which as you guys can see, it's not perfect. I'll probably do something a little bit different later, but I had to make something work. And then we've got our line lock buttons installed and wired here, and then the two-step arm switch there, which I'd like to run a switch or a push button, like a momentary switch, up to the steering wheel when the time comes. And then you've got the Raptor shift light. Like I said, we wired this guy in. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch of little things, but we just wanted to go ahead and plug away on some of the more uh, boring slash tedious stuff just to get it done and out of the way so that we can get back to the fun stuff. Um, we do have some big news coming for this thing, guys. I'm pretty freaking pumped, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm pumped. Uh, we finally decided on what we're going to do for boost, so that's pretty awesome. I'm not going to tell you guys yet until it gets here, and then once it gets here, I'll show you guys and we'll go through it and why I chose that. But as you guys can see, we've also got this thing set up on some 6 by 6s and everything else, and it actually worked out really good for leaving the transmission on it and stuff. Um, I don't, I didn't need it on a big stand to flip it around. I'm only doing a few things and mostly with the top end. So didn't really need to go out and buy a stand. It's going to work for me for now. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff coming up that we got to do to this thing, which leads me to show you guys. We got some parts in. We got the Melling 10295 pump. Comes with all your springs, obviously, the Copo Camaro spring and the other ones. We're probably going to run the standard spring that is in this one. We also got our oil pan gasket, we've got a ARP uh, balancer bolt, and then a whole bunch of gaskets and other things here. And then we've also got the CHE Precision Trunnion Upgrade Kit, 
which a lot of people will probably tell you it's a little bit of overkill for what exactly we're doing here, but I wanted a, the quietest valve train possible and just a, it's cheap insurance in my mind. But these things look pretty cool, not even gonna lie. They've got little grooves in them for uh, oil and wear, I'm guessing. And then you got the trunnions. They look pretty sweet as well. So I'm pretty excited to get this stuff on, guys. I think that's probably what we're gonna tackle next. And then, like I said, boost should be here in the next couple days. So I'm super excited about that. I can't wait to show you guys and go over why I chose what we chose. Um, but with that being said, guys, I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video so that we can dive into this fun stuff. And as always, Thank you for hanging out. Please like, subscribe, uh, comment, ring the bell, all that good stuff, and we will catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.